I am so excited to share with you some fun tips and tricks and techniques about working with folk art, folk art multi-surface paint, and our folk art textile medium. Just in time for this fall fun holiday season, I'm going to share with you how to paint some really fun candy corn adorned tennis shoes. And so we started our project with just some basic tennis shoes, the, the um, cotton canvas type that you can find at any of your local stores. These are perfect for both adults as well as little children. I'm sure every little ghost, ghoul, goblin, and little princesses will love wearing these candy corn shoes through the holiday season. We're working with the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paints, and there is a link that is going to be shared in the comments today that will uh, link you to a Folk Art Multi-Surface kit that is available, and you'll want to click on that link if you want to try out these paints. They're so fun and easy. The canvas shoes that I have today are just a slightly different in style than the ones that you see here with a laced up bow. This is the type where it's the slip on canvas and I thought it would be fun to show you um, a different style of shoe that can be decorated as well. We're going to begin by just simply drawing out a random pattern of our candy corn. And if you've ever tasted or tried or even seen candy corn in the stores, you know that basically it's a triangle shape but each of the points are rounded. So to draw out our candy corn shape, I began first with a stick of chalk. This chalk is sharpened. Normally chalk doesn't come with a nice pointy end here. So I used a pencil sharpener in the large area of the pencil sharper, stuck my piece of chalk in there, and of course turned it to shave it down to a nice drawing tip point. That's a great tip for those of you that like to sketch with a piece of chalk. You can get it down to a nice fine point simply by using a pencil sharpener. Great tip number one. Number two, our candy corn is a rounded triangle. And you can see on this shoe here, I've got a couple that I just started. So giving myself a pattern on just the front of this shoe for a different style and a different look, rather than carrying it throughout the whole shoe, we're going to just take and kind of lightly sketch out whatever shape candy corn size you want, but just remember that the corners are rounded. So doing that again, I'm just going to start with kind of like the base and I'm bringing it up to the top, again using that pointed stick of chalk to kind of round my edges and there you go. It's as easy as that. There's no need to try to give yourself on mine here, you can see some patterns of polka dots randomly scattered between the candy corn. There's no need to give yourself a pattern line for these little dots. Just simply sketch out as many candy corn as you would like on the top of your shoe. And on like my little slip-ons here, I'm planning on doing it just across the toe portion or the front of the shoe. However, if you want to carry it throughout the sides and the top all the way and the heel, I did just an ombre of candy corn. You can put as many candy corn patterns on your shoe as you like. So once you have your pattern kind of sketched out, the next thing we're going to do, because we're working on such a dark color, this being black, we want our, our candy corn colors to really just be vibrant and pop. So I based in some white first, and I'm going to share with you what I did. I have a little lid here, a little cap, just get any kind of small little dish, uh, a cap from a craft supply. You can even use the lid of an old pickle jar. And to, the reason I'm telling you to get a cap is we're going to have like a little container or a well to hold our folk art textile medium. We do not want it, uh, because it's so fluid and runny, we don't want it running or dripping all over our wax paper palette. So I just squeezed out a little bit of the folk art textile medium, and you can see it's kind of... Uh, white in color. I'm going to bring it up to the camera so you can see it even closer. It's very thin and runny, so it's nice to have something to contain your textile medium in. The brushes I'm going to work with are just two different small flat brushes. One is a size 6 and one is a size 10. Depending upon the size of your candy corn, you'll need to adjust your brush. Uh, a larger candy corn, a larger brush will do. Smaller candy corn, a smaller brush will do. And now I'm going to squeeze out some of the colors that we're going to work with. I'm working with wicker white. And the paint I'm using is the Folk Art Multi-Surface paint. Um, you can also use the original formula of Folk Art Acrylics if you don't have these on hand. 
I'm also going to squeeze out uh, just a little bit of a really beautiful bright sunny yellow. This is called moon yellow. And our third color for candy corn, you all know it's going to be the orange center of our candy. And that is pure orange that I'm going to use. So just going to put a little bit of pure orange out onto my palette. That's all we're going to need. Folk art textile medium in a sp small little container. We're going to need some white, yellow, and orange paint. And our two flat brushes. So let's go ahead and begin. Once we've got our pattern sketched on using our pointed chalk, we're now going to take a flat brush. Let me just back up for a moment. For those of you that do not know a lot about the folk art uh, mix, I'm um, sorry, the folk art multi-surface paints. This is a paint that goes on a multitude of surfaces, on wood, on tin, on glass, on terracotta, on uh, just about any surface you can think of. It also works great on fabric. You do not necessarily have to use a textile medium. I'm showing you today a just different technique, and I'm going to share with you what I did for my canvas shoes. If you are painting, let's say you want to do candy corn on your grandchild's t-shirt, and something that's going to be laundered quite a bit, you will do a different technique. You will need to pre-wash that t-shirt, and let it dry. When we pre-wash it in the washer and or let it dry in the dryer, you will not, let me repeat that, you will not use a fabric softener. So that means no liquid softeners in the washer and no dryer sheets in the dryer. You want your garment to be pre-washed to remove all that manufacturer's sizing and you will want to let it dry without any extra softener or sizing or other products. You want the fabrics natural. Now for my tennis shoes, because these were seasonal designs and I thought we probably are not going to be washing and wearing these many, many times, I did not pre-wash my shoes and I will not heat set the fabric. I'm going to let them just wash and wear. Chances are for a child especially, these shoes are going to only work for one season or one year and I don't think you're going to have to worry about the care of washing uh, many times throughout the season. So let me go back to that fabric t-shirt. If you apply this pattern on a t-shirt, once you pre-wash your geimer to remove that manufacturer sizing, you do not use fabric softener. You'll go about the um, design the same way we're going to paint it today. And then once it's painted, you'll want to heat set that paint onto the fabric of that t-shirt when you're completely done. And to heat set it, we always tell people to put the painted design Paint side up on an ironing board. Lay a pressing cloth, like that could be like an old pillowcase or a sheet of muslin, on top of that painted design. You're going to use your iron to heat set. Set your iron to the same setting as the fabric that you're working with. So if it's a cotton t-shirt, you're going to set your iron to the cotton setting, and then you're going to not use steam. Again, it's a dry, hot heat. No steam of your iron. And you take that iron and you press it directly on top of that pressing cloth with the painted side of your t-shirt underneath that. So you're sandwiching that all together. And once you hold your iron there for 30 seconds, dry hot heat for 30 seconds, lift that iron up, move it to the next section, let it heat set, do the same thing over and over until the entire t-shirt has been heat set of all the painted areas. Then you're good to go and your piece can be thrown in the washer and the dryer and be used many, many times. I'm not doing that today with our canvas shoes. Again, our canvas shoes are meant to be more of a seasonal, probably one and done type uh, apparel. And I want to let you know that in the studio with me today, I have Andy Jones, who's moderating for me. So, Andy, if we have any questions, shout them out to me, because I'm glad to uh, help answer any questions anyone might have about fabric painting. Okay, I think everybody's just ready for you to paint. Okay, let's get going then. So, for our canvas shoes today, once I have my kind of sketched on little rounded triangle shapes, I do want them to have a white undercoat or a white base coat, only because I'm working on such a dark background of the black. So I'm going to take my larger flat brush and I can work with, um, let me get a little bit more, there it is on the side. Uh, let, I'm going to use a little bit of textile medium in my brush. I do not necessarily have to do this, but it does help the paint flow a little bit easier on this canvas type fabric. 
the canvas of a tennis shoe, you know, is kind of like a textured surface. And as I pull it out, and I'm going to bring it up, you can see that texture in the shoe itself. So that textile medium is allowing my paint to kind of easily glide and fill in the shape of the candy corn. And it's also allowing me to get nice, smooth edges. If I did not use the textile medium here, you would just need to be a little bit more careful with how you apply the paint to your surface. So it's just simply as easy as that. I've got one more here. Let me paint one more for you. And this is just a first undercoat. And we're going to, again, a little textile medium, flat brush, filling it with the wicker white. And again, I'm using the multi-surface paint. There is a link here in our uh, video today if you're interested in learning more about the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paints. The link will take you right to a great kit with a many, many different colors that you can choose from. When I sketched out my pattern, too, I just want to tell you, I sketched out each of the candy corns very randomly. I did not want them all facing in the same direction. So there's some pointing up, some pointing to the side, some pointing down. And once you fill them all in with the first application of white, you can see here these two that I just painted and this one that I painted earlier. Uh, let me hold it up closer. You can see it's not quite as vibrant as the other ones in white. So this is just one coat. I'm going to do my, all of my shoes all with one coat and you can do both shoes at the same time. Then by the time you finish basing in all of your candy corn, you're probably dry enough to go back to these that are looking like they don't have much paint on them and put in a second coat of white. And the reason I want a second coat, again, I want that white of the candy corn to be nice, bright, and crisp and white. I want to have a nice, strong white on my candy corn. And when we begin painting in the colors of the candy corn, we want that white color, that base of the white color, to help that yellow really pop, to help that orange pop. Sometimes yellow and orange paint colors tend to be a little bit more transparent, not quite as opaque, and so that white undercoat is really going to help those colors pop. So now once we've got all the white on, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to take the yellow and my yellow again is moon yellow and I'm going to put a little bit of that on my brush and you can see I've done two already here on this side and when you think of candy corn sometimes you think of an ombre you're thinking maybe it's white yellow and then orange in color value down but it really isn't candy corn is actually white the center is orange and the bottom is yellow and for a fun fact about candy corn, if you didn't know it, it was a candy that was developed in the late 1880s. So fun. It's been around for many, many years. So what we're going to do now with our moon yellow is we're going to take and paint just the bottom. And if you look at real candy corn, there's not a complete exact line between all of the colors they kind of blend one into the other. So with the yellow, we're going to put our yellow on. And again, that's moon yellow. I'm just kind of brushing it to the bottom. I'm now going to wipe my brush. And I'm going to pick up again a little bit of the textile medium and a little bit of the white because I want a nice bright tip to our candy corn. So I'm going to add that white. Oops, I had a, just a little bit of yellow still in my brush. Let me squeeze that out. Now I'm going to pick up that white again. And we want a nice bright tip to our candy corn. So I'm going to go back and add white tips after I add the yellow. The last color to our candy corn is, of course, that orange that goes in the middle. So I'm going to pick up some orange in my brush only on one corner of the brush. So I have a brush that is not full width of the candy corn or of the orange for the candy corn. I'm going to tip that corner so that I'm only filling a portion of that flat brush with the orange. Can you all see that? I've got orange on one side and no paint color on the other side. So I'm loading it nice and full with that orange. And again, that's pure orange. The side of my flat brush that does not have color in it right now is going to have moon yellow. 
So I'm going to add a little bit of moon yellow stroking into the side of that puddle and then blend on my palette. So we're going to end up with a brush that has both the orange and the yellow, both pure orange and moon yellow on the same brush. Now when we look at our candy corn, again the orange is to the center of our little candy shape. So I'm going to, on the side of my brush that has the yellow in it, the moon yellow, I'm going to rest that on top of the yellow and I'm going to pat that orange on right on so that some of my brush is falling on top of the yellow that we've already painted on there. I'm going to reload my brush every so often as I feel I need to. And again, this brush is resting half on the yellow and half on the white undercoat or base coat where the orange is going. We want that orange color to blend. I'm going to hold it up close so you can see. The orange is kind of blending into that yellow. And we'll do this on every single little candy corn. I'll do it one more time here. The yellow is on the yellow, the orange is on the white undercoat. And I'm just kind of patting that brush as I apply the paint directly on the candy corn. And the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to clean my brush a little bit in some water because I really want to make sure that I get a nice clean brush to start with. Because now what we're going to do to do the tip of our candy corn we are going to side load into the white. Again, that's wicker white, and I'm using the multi-surface formula of paints. I'm going to tap just the little bit of textile medium. And now I'm going to side load into the pure orange on the other half of the brush. So I'm going to end up with a brush that is pure orange on one side, and it's going to be the wicker white on the other side. We're going to repeat the same process of loading my brush so I have a nice full brush of the orange and the white. And I'm going to hold my brush so that the orange side of my brush is directly on top of part of the orange that we've already done. And the white will be on the white undercoat area. So same kind of technique. I'm just patting that color on and allowing that to kind of uh, become an ombre shade between the two. It's If you can see these, uh, this one here and this one here, See, there's an exact line between the orange and the white. We want that color to look like it's more blended between the two. So we're going to repeat that one more time. The orange side of the brush is going on top of the orange of the candy corn. And the white is going on top of the undercoat area. And we're just patting that color on, allowing them to kind of intermingle a little bit. And that's all there is to painting these candy corns. It's very simple, very easy, and so fun. So you would continue through doing all of your shoes this way. Yes, Andy, I think we've got a question. Do you have a question? Would you paint each candy corn all the way through, or would you do the yellow on all the candy corn, then the white, and then the ombre effect? That is such a great question. Thank you to whomever asked that question. What I would do is first draw all of my designs out, everything all at one time. I would put the first coat of white on all of them all at one time. I would put the second coat of white on all of the candy corn all at one time. I would put the yellow on all at one time. So for, in other words, every step I would do on all of my candy corn shapes before I move on to the next one. Perfect. To me, it just makes it easier. You're not having to clean your brush. Now you could do them one at a time. Most definitely you could, but you're also needing to wipe your brush, clean your brush, reload your brush between the colors. And if you work kind of what I call an assembly line fashion, it goes so much smoother, faster, and easier for you. So I would do every step one at a time on all of the candy corn shapes. So that's all I did to create the candy corn. And if you look at my finished shoe here, I also thought, well, wouldn't it be cute to scatter some white polka dots? Everyone loves white polka dots. And there's a couple different ways you could do polka dots. You can use a small round brush or a liner brush, and you can actually fill it with the white with a little bit of textile medium and paint a small little circle. You could also use the handle end of your paintbrush, dip it into a color with a little bit of textile medium mixed in there, and then you could dot the surface and create little dots of color. But let me show you what I did. 
again a little cheat and making it so easy this is even something you could grab the kids and let them paint on their own shoes at the kitchen table and have fun with i used the eraser end of a pencil and this is an eraser that has not been used so it's not worn down on the edges it's got a nice full round circle you can see right here and it doesn't have any paint or anything on it like I said it's an unused eraser and what I did was to make these little white dots I just dipped it into the color that I wanted which was the wicker white so I'm dipping the eraser into the white paint I'm going to tap it on the wax paper palette or foam plate whatever you're using as your palette I'm going to tap it on there a couple times just to make sure and as I hold it up you can see I've got paint evenly across the full circle on the eraser and then once I'm going to ready to put my um, polka dot on I'm going to touch and you can pull up immediately but what I like to do here's another pro tip for you once you touch you're going to then move to the right and then reverse it and move to the left. So you're going to touch and you're going to twist a little bit to the right, then twist back to the left. And by doing that, you're going to get such a beautiful circular shape of a dot. It's not going to be irregular. Let me do one here. Here's another. Let me do one in orange here on the table for you to show you. I'm filling the bottom of my pencil with the orange paint. And I'm going to touch and I'm going to twist to the right, twist to the left, and then lift up. And you're going to get a nice, smooth, even circle every single time you do it that way. Pro tip, pro tip, pro tip. <laughs> and that's all there is to our shoes. I did let my finished shoe completely dry um, before I did anything to it. And the last step I did was I removed the basic, ordinary cotton tennis shoe um, shoe ties that come with it shoe strings and I thought it would be fun to jazz them up with a little bit of double faced ribbon and what better color than purple to kind of coordinate with our holiday theme of our candy corn shoes any questions Andy no I think you have covered everything and people are loving these shoes I think there's going to be a parade of candy corn shoes come Halloween this year. Well, great. And I will welcome you if you do paint a pair of shoes for one of your little ghouls, goblins, or princesses. Please do take a picture and share with us in the Facebook group, Let's Paint with Plaid. Use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge. We'd love to see what you do and how you create your own candy corn shoes. So that's all for today. I'm Chris Williams tuning in from our Plaid 